Hello, my name is Isai Yun from the Developer Relations Team and Open Source Program uh, Office TF. And I'm in charge of open source in line. And when I say that I'm in charge of open source, you could guess that I probably cover a lot and I get a lot of um, jobs. So for example, I get some questions like, uh, what is this open source license? Or I want to be more involved in this open source and please help me on such and such. So during the session, I would like to summarize and share the open source activities we've been doing in the past year. And I thought that informing you about those activities would be uh, informative and useful for you. So let's talk about that in more detail. First of all, uh, let's look at the agenda uh, about what we're going to cover today. So let's look at number one. Um, let's see what kind of open sources have been released this year and how the released open sources are being operated. Second, the line engineers uh, whether they are contributing to open sources, and if they did, what kind of contributions have been made this year. And in addition to disclosure and contribution, there were uh, multiple internal and external events uh, related to open source, and they were very entertaining and informative, so I'd like to promote them. And finally, where is Lions Open Source uh, going in the future, and why we need this kind of direction right now? First of all, I will introduce about what the newly released open sources are and how well they have been operating during these years. Let's look at these numbers. A total of 31 public repositories were created from January to October. And these 31 repositories consisted of a total of 14 projects. And we found that 34 engineers participated in the new open source release projects. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the newly released open source projects one by one. I'll introduce them in order uh, they were published. In June this year, the Korean UIT team translated the open source webpack document into Korean and released the translated version as an open source. And what was interesting after the release of this project was that the six external contributors voluntarily contributed to, the, uh, to improving the document. And so this is uh, what has been done during the last four months. So from typos until documents that have been translated have uh, been a part of their contributions. So I thought that this was very meaningful. If there are any people who are studying Webpack in Korean, uh, you might find this helpful. And if you find any typos, please feel free to report them. Next is the Central Dogmas Rust client. It is an open source that is used a lot inside Line, And we have open sourced the official Rust uh, client for Central Dogma, our service configuration uh, repository. And I thought that this was very meaningful because the joy of developing this project as an open source is that uh, in-house users directly uh, made the Rust client according to their needs and even disclosed it as an open source. Third is Hedver. And while ABC Studio development team of Line was thinking about team efficiency, they released a method to replace the most popular semantic version system. And that's why we came up with Hedver. As you can see in the um, slide, it is said that only the head part, it can be decided by a person and the rest is automatically determined, reducing a lot of the human effort. So if you're interested in um, these versionings or 
uh, improving efficiency, there are examples in the repository. Next is line FIDO2 server. FIDO is commonly known as an authentication using biometrics. So the Lion Security R&D team has released FIDO configuration as standard for biometric authentication written in Java as an open source. And Lion is also a member of FIDO Alliance and uh, more detailed stories about FIDO are dealt in a separate session. So if you're interested, you should uh, join the session. It's titled the open source contribution starting with Lion FIDO2 server. Next is the Kotlin multi-platform mobile series. So ABC Studio, which released Headver, is making Android and iOS apps using the Kotlin multi-platform mobile. So we call this KMM and a total of five KMM libraries used here. And these examples have been released as uh, open source. And these are things that make it easier for developers to develop each platform or help users. And both platforms have the same user experience. So it would be very useful for those that are interested in multi-platform development. So up till now, uh, they were, these were per pure open source projects, but this year there are some new things that we started. There were cases where the project itself served by line was released as an open source. And of course, many of the projects introduced above were also being used as actual services. However, there were many cases where it was made for general usage rather than just for a specific service. This year, there were some attempts to develop code for actual services as an open source. In July, Lion's blockchain service Link Mainnet was released as an open source. So far, so far a total of eight repositories have been released and are being developed as open source at the moment. And as I was um, operating the actual service, I did go through a lot of trial and errors, and that's why it was a very memorable project. I hope that the service will continue to do well in the future and become a popular project as an open source. And as you can see, ABC Studio is making various attempts, and not long ago, Demaikan service, which is a food delivery line app in Japan, uh, this uh, service, user feedback platform, was released as open source. Of course, it was made for the Stemaikan service, but it is also a standalone web app. So if you need a user voice platform, you, want, uh, you might want to check it out. And this year, a lot of SDKs and demo codes uh, using Line API were also released. Let's take a brief look. A total of 11 examples of Line API use cases have been released. And there are example codes that can be used in various cases, such as ordering, restaurant reservations, and login. And the Japanese and English documents are also supported. So you can get some more information by searching for Line API use cases on Line GitHub or visiting the website. In addition, chatbot examples using Line Clova and Line Blockchain SDK JavaScript is uh, here to help you easily start blockchain development has been released until now. So, so far we've been uh, looking at what has been disclosed as open source until now. Why don't we look at a few numbers? 100, 700 and um, 2,300. What do you think they mean? Yes, there were a total of 100 public repositories created until today and more than 710 newly created issues have been registered from January 1st of 2021 until now. And more than 420 have been um, solved until now. And more than uh, 2,300 newly created pull requests exist. Of course, the value cannot be measured only by the size of the number, but it is possible to gauge how passionate 
the line open source maintainers and contributors have been okay so for the following is looking at the most used programming languages when we put together all the repositories line is currently running in terms of the number of repositories um, Java, Python, and Go languages accounted for the largest share, and then JavaScript and Kotlin are next. As far as I can remember, up until last year, Java was overwhelmingly dominant. But amongst the newly released open sources this year, uh, Python and Go languages seem to be more popular. That's why now they are similar in proportion. So. Hmm. We'll have to look at what's going to happen next year because it's probably going to change according to the programming trend. Up to this point, we've talked about uh, open source um, disclosures, but this time let's summarize the open source contribution. I brought a leaderboard and this is called the Open Source Contributor Index. When a commit is made through a company email, it's considered that you have contributed as a member of the company and the open source contribution by company is listed in this order. So here you can see 61 means that liners have contributed um, 61 commits. And then 161 uh, is at least how many people have committed once this year. So this is a sum of activities that are summed up until September 2021. And um, until last August, uh, line was ranked 119th. And we have gone up very quickly. And we have about two months left until the end of this year. So I can't wait to see how our rank goes up. Let's take a brief overview about what kind of contributions have been made this year. And as I said before, um, translation contributions have been actively made this year. And last year, our UIT team in Japan translated the Bootstrap document into Japanese. Another translation of Bootstrap icons have been contributed this year. These bootstrap icons are an open source icon library that is used in web development. And I hope that this will be useful for front end and engineers in Japan. The UIT team in Korea translated the Webpack documentation into Korean. And this time I introduced the part that all translated contents were released as an open source. So I think this would be helpful for front end developers in Korea. So why does our front end development team con uh, continue to contribute to translations? It's very difficult, but uh, translation contributions can be a huge help to junior developers in the local community. I mean, you can read the original text in English, but reading it in your native language is very helpful for understanding. And it's not easy for developers to translate it uh, by themselves. So in order for multiple people to translate together, the terminology also has to be unified and the grammar of different languages need to be studied again. And uh, you also have to check and review each other to make sure that the content is, is unified and correct. So it takes a lot of time and effort. So in conclusion, uh, there are also some pros is that this could be a project that other people want to contribute to. I think a lot of people who think that they can translate, even though they are not very confident in coding, uh, can rise up to the challenge and contribute to this. Anyway, our bootstrap and webpack translations, I would like to thank you once again for your interest and support. When I was preparing for this session, 
I was looking, I was trying to create uh, today's uh, session as the top six open sources contributed by line developers over the past year. I tried to track it, but I got a little lost because the range of activities was much wider than I could um, than I had expected. So I couldn't really narrow it down. So and a lot of the activities couldn't be excluded. So in the end, I grouped them into fields. Let's take a look at what field line engineers were most active in. Again, since Lion is a place that handles large scale traffic, it was found that open sources in container storage database and monitoring were used a lot and contributed to a lot too. Following that contributions were also actively made to Android development and testing libraries. So here are a few screenshots of places where contributions have been made. And I've just mentioned that we liners use and contribute a lot. And it has been confirmed that line engineers that are mostly contributing to open source when they become heavily dependent on a open source. Why do you think so? Probably because of efficiency. This is because if you develop and add necessary functions only in-house, such as bug patches, the upstream open source has continuously has to continuously reflect the changes every time the version is updated. Um, and there might be some problems that are too difficult to solve on our own. Then if a developer who is already active in the open source asks for help, the community might respond more actively. At line, we deeply sympathize with the net function or the positive function of open source contributions. So we will continue to work hard to create a um, open source friendly development culture. Next, let's talk about sponsorship. This might not be directly contributing this, but this year we have directly uh, sponsoring these three open sources, Bootstrap, Husky, and Vue.js. And these are all front-end technology. In the meanwhile, I've been um, often sponsoring open source community events. So meetups and conferences and Line will contribute and um, participate in this. So after doing this a few times, I found that the case of sponsoring an event uh, and the case of directly sponsoring an open source is more different than it looks. At the event, in return for support, we get to set up a booth, uh, have briefing sessions, or our company's logo receives some exposure. So it's a give and take kind of relationship. But when we donate directly to the open source as a sponsor, in addition to um, getting some exposure, uh, this conveyed a strong message of support for open source to the community. And through this opportunity, I also hope that Liners and the open source community could grow closer. Okay. Um, I hope that this will also continue in the future. Until now, uh, we've been talking about the introduction to open source contributions. And from now, I would like to briefly introduce some open source related events that we've held inside and outside the company. As I explained at the beginning of the session, the events were very informative and you can also watch the recordings of the outside events again. So you can always uh, look into it. There were two in-house events called um, Line Tech Talk. And in April of this year, there was a session introducing two of the Line's open source activities. Uh, we had some time to introduce FromGen, which is the Prometheus configuration file generator, and then uh, the Japanese translation of Bootstrap that we did last year. 
So we explained uh, from Gen and Bootstrap uh, what kind of areas you should be careful about and also the experiences uh, that the developers went through during this time. And recently, there's also a time where we could introduce some open source licenses that developers need to know about. And uh, we've we also gave some basic tips about how to use open source licenses and the obligations and how to structure our software architecture. Um, I would also like to introduce an external event called Line Developers Meetup, and this session was held in Japanese. Uh, in February, we also introduced Kotlin Development and Leech, which is a Kotlin library that was used in Android. Uh, Leech, a Kotlin library that was used in Android and released it as an open source. In this session, we invited two uh, developers from Finatext and UB to talk about their Kotlin development experiences. And when I was taking this uh, screenshot, uh, a lot of people were laughing and smiling. And if you're interested in uh, Kotlin use cases, please look into this. And this was a Japanese session. And from Vue.js, uh, we had a meetup uh, with Vue.js in May, and uh, the Vue.js Japanese and Korean communities got together. And we had time to introduce Vue Pivot Table Plus and the Vue.js open source library released by Line. Uh, we also introduced our Vue.js contribution experiences within uh, liners. And in particular, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Kazupon and Park Changju for participating in the community once again. Um, the people who were very active in the Vue.js community were very kind and showed a lot of enthusiasm. And despite of the long um, event, I was inspired by their uh, energy and passion. If you're interested in Vue.js development, you might want to watch the video again. And some of them were in Japanese and some of them are also in Korean. In Korea, I've also showed uh, some several videos through YouTube rather than a meetup. And the open source related videos were pretty popular. So I would like to introduce them to you once again. One of uh, Line's largest open source projects is Armeria. And we have two uh, developers who maintain Armeria, and uh, they are full-time open source developers. And we had the time to uh, do a Q&A session with them. For example, we talked about the differences between service development versus open source development, what areas they pay a lot of attention to when developing open sources, and things that we need to be careful about when we contribute to open source. And I think this video is pretty entertaining, uh, even if it's not your, uh, your own um, field and it's in Korean. There is also one developer uh, in line who is working as a Python committer. And uh, in this video, uh, we talked about how he became a committer for Py a Python project and what a committer actually does and uh, how to contribute to open sources. This is in Korean. Uh, there was also an uh, interview video about the Webpack's Korean translation. Uh, so if you're interested, you should check it out. So far, I've introduced uh, some events related to open source, but we are also planning to open new events at the end of this year and next year. Um, even if it's a small meetup, it requires a lot of effort and time. So we need to prepare the presentation, the research. Uh, we also have to recruit participants and um, video editing, and it takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, despite of this, you might ask, why are they um, doing these events? As you know, communicating with people is the most important factor in open source. And this is because in the end, we need to collaborate, listen, and reflect other people's opinions, which is the elements that you need to make high quality software. That's why we think we should continue to create opportunities to connect with people through these events. 
And of course, uh, information can be delivered in documents such as readmes, but there is a limit to delivering information in writing. Uh, it's difficult to convey everything we want uh, or have a real-time Q&A uh, when we just look at uh, documents. However, these days, uh, as we continue to hold events online like this, it, it was pretty efficient and good uh, to leave the presentation as and record it as a video and use it multiple times. Uh, we'll continue to hold open source related events next year, so please stay tuned. Yeah, so far we've delivered a variety of news including open source disclosure, operation, contribution, and events. Now, which direction are we going in the future? Uh, we want to talk about what kind of change we want to occur with a particular set of goals. And you might ask me, um, wait, isn't that enough? Didn't you do enough? But I want to say that this is not enough and we have a lot of things to do because the size of line engineering uh, to, continues to grow. And this doesn't mean that we're just growing in headcount, but we're also uh, growing in diversity. We are constantly accepting and challenging new technologies and businesses. And so uh, we have to confront these new challenges. And not only that, the open source business is rapidly changing especially last year and this year, you have probably um, experienced that the license policy is changing and new licenses are coming up more frequently. So we do focus on those areas a lot. These changes can eventually become risks or obstacles uh, to other open source activities. So we need to consider the various circumstances. And I think that our open source program Office TF has decided that now is the best time to build a solid foundation. That's where I want to talk about the open chain project. The project's goal is to create a more trustworthy open source culture within our company. And some of you may have heard the session um, introducing this Open Che project at last year's Dev Day. So Che, who is the leader of the Open Chain project, explained about what the project does. So to briefly tell you what this is, the project is run by the Linux Foundation and it has uh, been preparing to be registered into the ISO standard at the end of this uh, year. And this open chain has one goal to reduce the risk of open source in software supply chain by introducing compliance standards uh, amongst different companies and uh, several global companies are working together to create and evolve this standard. And you might ask me why we should focus on compliance and governance right now. Why now? This is because we need to focus on open source licenses and policies. In fact, licenses are closely related to copyrights, and copyrights are the most basic right of open source developers. Open source compliance is an activity that respects this copyright and, and adheres to licensing obligations. And in other words, using open source tends to be the starting point of using um, an open source activity. And that's why our team, which supports various open source activities, spends a lot of time on compliance. As a result, we have decided that in this ever-changing environment, uh, having a good compliance foundation will give us more room 
to support other activities in the future. Open chain is not necessarily limited to compliance. How well it collaborates the, with the community and understanding the importance of collaborating with the community is one of the requirements of the ISO standard. So this is an area that we definitely want to improve in the future. I would also like to talk about the progress that we have made until now. So here you can see the requirements. Um, the open chain standard can be divided into five elements. So number one, do you have an open source program or a policy? And whether you have defined roles and provided support to fulfill them, prepared reviews and approval procedures, organized compliance results, and worked to collaborate with the community. And we took some time to understand these uh, requirements and to study the areas that we needed to improve. So this is what we're working on right now. So right now we're working on the basics and the groundwork. So it's time to fill in the missing pieces. And once uh, we have looked into the policies, then we kind of restructure the organization accordingly. And then we also have to provide educational documents and material to our developers and also create a system um, to do this. So once this is all done, I believe that um, laying the groundwork for open source in our culture is something that we want to do. So spreading this culture, getting feedback and educating our developers is something that we need to do in the future. So around early or mid next year, I think we're going to probably see some results. So to recap, we're here to do our part of laying the groundwork for open source activities. And as a result, we will become a more trusted and reliable company and support our engineers to actively engage in the open source uh, community based on this stable environment. And a stable environment and active open source activities will eventually create an atmosphere where not only line engineers, but the community can grow together. And there are times where I feel that we're making not much progress, but each step that we take will contribute a lot to the ecosystem in the end. And when I draw these kind of pictures about the future, I feel very proud and look forward to what's going to happen in the future. Uh, this is pretty much it. And uh, today I've introduced uh, a summary of Lions activities in 2021 in open source and our open source policies future direction. So I hope I spark some interest in our open source projects. See you next time and thank you for your attention.